Hello creatures, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you my June wrap up. I'm also filming my April and May wrap ups today. So there's going to be three of these TBR videos out in very quick succession. This will probably be the third one you've seen if you've bothered to go back and watch the first two. I've been struggling with wrap ups for a couple of months, hence why they haven't been filmed because I read so much. It's really, really difficult to find the energy to make these videos and put them out, especially because I don't own most of the books I read. They're from libraries and I've had to return them. So adding in the thumbnails causes it to take quite a bit of work to actually make them but I really want to have these videos on my channel for posterity especially because I don't typically do reviews and that sort of content. I don't talk a lot about the books I've actually read. I do other stuff like unboxings, tags, it's not really blow by blow reading and I read too much to talk about absolutely everything so wrap ups are still the best way to get that across. Now as much as I say that I read way too much for these wrap ups to be comfortable, I actually only read eight books in the month of June. It was a bit of a come down month to be honest, it was, I'd handed in a a fairly huge essay for my honours coursework at the very start of the month and then it was sort of a lot of recovery time there was a lot going on and I was doing other things I was doing writing um, I was working on different content ideas for this channel all sorts of different things so I just didn't get to reading as much but what I did read I enjoyed so I'm still I'm still really happy with how I've read but I do need to get myself back in gear because I'm sitting on I think it's 13 books behind my current goal which isn't great Right, but we'll have to see. So the first book that I read in the month of June was The Key to Happily Ever After by Tiff Marcello. This was a contemporary romance about three sisters who work in the family bridal boutique. They've recently taken it over. It's like a wedding planning business but they also sell dresses and that sort of thing. And it's pretty much the story of each sister's romantic relationships and their personal issues and triumphs and that sort of thing. I did read the entire thing but it was fairly lacklustre. I can't remember very much about it. It. I couldn't summarise it properly for you or tell you the main characters names so I only rated it three out of five stars. So the second book I read in June was an old favourite. This was my fourth reread of this book since it came out and that was Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey Quiston. This is one of my favourite books of all time. It's very very special to me. If you don't know about this book, which I highly doubt considering it was really really hyped on booktube when before it came out and after, it's the story of Alex, the half Mexican son of the first female president of the United States and the story of Henry who is a Prince of England. It's an ultimate history gay romance set in a world in which Trump never became president. Really, really love it. Makes me happy. It was five stars again. I just, I never get sick of these characters or this story. So it was really, really nice to revisit these guys again. I will probably read this book again before the end of the year. It's just, it's one of my happy place books. I don't know why it just is. So the next thing I read was a non-fiction work. It was called How We Desire by Carolyn Emke. It's a very, very long essay say on the origins of desire and specifically homoerotic desire. The author is a woman who is attracted to women and she writes a lot about the formation of desire and how it's perceived. It was, it was a really really inter interesting piece about the discovery of sexuality and identity and the idea that there's a lot of people who discover their identity only once at during puberty but there's also a second discovery for many many people and it sort of asks the question what if we didn't think of sexuality as a question with one specific answer but as an evolving concept on a personal basis. I really enjoyed it. I didn't give it a rating because I don't know if it's the kind of thing that should be rated. I don't know. It, it was really really good and I found it thought provoking though a little dry in some places. There are quite long stretches where you talk about the author's life and different experiences that don't necessarily seem connected but are. So I found that really interesting. This is a translated work and I feel that if you want to read this book for your own knowledge or just for the hell of it, you probably should be aware that, that there are words like transsexual and homosexual used, which I know aren't inherently offensive, but some people may find them that way. I do think that's a result of it being a fairly literal translation, but just, just a heads up, there are some terms where I was surprised to read them. Because it wasn't necessarily discussed in language that identity is termed in now. It's not super out of date and I didn't find anything particularly offensive, but 
just something to be aware of if there's certain terms that you might find surprising but not offensive. So the next book I went so the next book I read was a graphic novel called Bodywork. This is the first in a series of graphic novels written by Ben Aronovich that are set in his Rivers of London universe. They go they follow the same characters and I loved it. So I have a lot of feelings about the Rivers of London books. I don't know why I love them so much. I just do. I think they're really clever, they're inventive and they're really fun. The graphic novels obviously can't capture as much detail as the novels which was probably the one thing I missed. I've just gotten so used to the high quality of Ben Aronovich's writing that it was odd to not have it there kind of but it, it still added in another piece and it made references that I've read in the main series of novels make sense because you don't have to read any of well actually I would recommend reading the novels if you want to read the graphic novels because then I don't think they'd make very much sense but you don't have to read the graphic novels to read the novels but he still mixes in little references and that sort of thing into the series which I thought was really fun. It was about a haunted car in London and multiple haunted cars actually which was really interesting. I liked the art style. No it was just it was a good time that added another little piece into the fabric of this world. I ended up rating it four out of five stars just because I did did miss that character development in some spaces. The next one was Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor. This is the second book in Rick Rawdon's Norse mythology series. It follows the story of Magnus Chase who is a young son of Frey who dies in the first chapter of the first book. It's not a spoiler, it's his whole thing. Magnus is an Ein Heri. I, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. I know my accent just butchered it. Essentially is a dead warrior who is waiting to fight in Ragnarok but he's having some adventures along the way. Hammer of Thor introduces Alex Fierro who is a transgender gender fluid teenager who is my favourite character in the series. I really really liked him or her. Alex does not use gender neutral pronouns instead switching entirely between male and female pronouns. So, so I will probably swap between he and she when I'm discussing the character. I'm not intending it as misgendering, that is how Alex presents in this book. So basically in this one Magnus and his friends have to reclaim Thor's hammer from some giants and it retells some of the I think funnier Norse myths. Again I really really enjoy Rick Rawdon's writing, this book was great. It was quite fun. It dove into some more of the complex concepts in the book. Again, it introduced Alex, who I still think is one of the best examples of a trans or gender fluid character that I've seen in like really mainstream children's fiction. Obviously there are other characters and other authors who identify as trans or gender fluid but Rick Rawdon's books have a particular clout and they're very very popular so seeing him adapt to needs and wants in representation is really really fantastic and I know he does his research when it comes to characters. These, this series also features features Sam Samira al-Abbas who is a Muslim Valkyrie. So this book in particular gets into her relationship with her religion and the existence of the Norse gods alongside her religion. It's done in a really really respectful way. I really loved that it's getting into those more complex concepts. I think I really think it's great that it's exploring those concepts that probably a lot of people when they read Percy Jackson and the Cain Chronicles and other books of this style it offers them an explanation of how their faith and how this world can coexist and I think that's really really fantastic. I did only rate this four out of five stars just because it wasn't my favourite. It's just I love Percy Jackson so much. I'm really really passionate about Greek and Roman myth so these, these books while they're fantastic they just don't have the same lure to me and because of that it feels like there's something missing even though there's really not it's just that I'm not as passionate about Norse mythology as I am about the Greek world. So four out of five stars I am hoping to read the third one in this trilogy very very soon. When I finally finished the next book in this wrap up it was a major major relief because it took me the better part of I think it was two and a half months maybe three and that is Soulbinder by Sebastian de Castell. I don't know what it is with these books every time I pick one up I get stuck I put it down I pick it up again and I fly through it. Soulbinder has happened two or three times I kept trying to start it and stopping and then I got halfway through stalled out on it for a while and then I finally finished it and it was five stars. All of these books have been five stars. I cannot recommend them enough. 
they're fantasy coming of age stories of a young man who is trying to find himself in a world that seems to continually reject him. These are heavily influenced by sort of cowboy western themes but also pairs some really really cool fantasy elements with that. They're really really fun, I really like them, would highly recommend. I can't say any more about this without it being spoilery because this is the fourth book in the series. So I have two left, both of which I still have out on holds from my library but I'm thinking I'll probably be returning them and coming back to them because I've had them out for months. I got them before I went into isolation so I haven't had a chance to return them but I also haven't read them so I think I'll return them and then I'll give it another try soonish. So the seventh book that I read this month was another Rivers of London graphic novel. This was Night Witch by Ben Aronovich. This followed the story of a Russian witch who features in the main Rivers of London series. Sort of pads out her experience a little bit. Again it adds another piece of the puzzle. I can't tell you too much because it will be spoilers. This was also four stars. This is the second of the graphic novels that have come out I have not been reading them in order, sort of. I read the seventh one first because I had access to it and then I've gone back. Body Work is the first one, Night Witch is the second. And it's incredibly annoying to be honest because Libby has the first two volumes of the third one but each full graphic novel is five volumes or five issues. So I can't read all of it, I can read 40% of it but I don't want to do that because I'll either forget or I'll be really really annoyed that it's sort of hovering on my Goodreads for ages. So I'm going to hold off on that and hope that they add the rest of them soon. The last book I read in June was also a Rivers of London book that I can't talk about heaps because it will be so spoilery if I do because it is Lies Sleeping which is the seventh book in the Rivers of London series. There is absolutely no way for me to describe this book without giving you spoilers this has probably been my favorite in the series because it dragged all the elements of the previous six books together beautifully all of them have been really strong this is another series that every book has gotten five stars I inhale them I love them I'm really really looking forward to reading False Value but I buy all these books as I read them so I'm waiting for that to come out in the same size as the rest of the series though not the same edition because I don't know why they did this but it really annoys me. Galants have changed the covers. So Lies Sleeping is the first one that didn't come out in the rest of the covers I have. They've all swapped to this sort of more black and white look with just a little splash of colour and the really square block letters up the top. The rest of my books are very very similar to this, like similar enough that it doesn't make me want to scratch my own skin off when I look at them, but they are still different, they're a lot more colourful, so it's just a little thing that's incredibly annoying. And then book eight, False Value, is completely black with green, like neon green, the first edition, Waterstones edition, but glowed in the dark. It's that kind of green. So I would like Galance to stop messing around with the covers, but we will see. So I really, really loved this one. There's a, another Ben Aronovich book coming out uh, either next month or the month after called Tales from the Folly. Really, really looking forward to that. That is short story set in the sort of main magical police station that features in this series. I would highly recommend going and checking Rivers of London out if you like how I've described this series or just enjoyed my ranting because I didn't tell you very much about it at all. So those are all the books I read in the month of June. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Let me down know down below what you read in the month of June and let me know if there's any books that you think I would enjoy based on what I've talked about here because as I've said before I'm always looking for new recommendations and just trying to make that TBR even bigger. I'll finish it one day. All my social media links are down in the description box below. Subscribe if you want to, like it if you did and I will see you soon in my next video.